one? Yeah. Feet? Okay. Uh, all right. Hey, Alexander Petty with the Ravenswood Academy. Guess what? They're finally here. I, I thought I had them upside down at first. They're finally here. Swords women playing cards. Let's crack these open and take a look. Um, this will not be rapid fire. There's going to be lots of interesting um, history to go over as far as the portraits and the cards and the detail. So get cozy, grab a blanket, grab some hot chocolate or something to drink, and uh, let's take a look. All right, well, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So here we have our box, beautifully ornate. Um, none of our portraits inside for the Swordsman playing cards had a saber. So that was kind of one thing I wanted to throw in, or they didn't have a Western saber. So that was one thing I wanted to kind of throw in um, onto the box art as sort of a homage for all of our saber enthusiasts out there. Beauty meets strength, swordswoman playing cards, RA for Ravenswood Academy, of course. Just really nice. I wanted something that looked like you picked up a old style deck of playing cards from maybe the 1800s, like this was a Victorian product. And I think we really captured the elegance there with that art. Really, really enjoying that. On the side, Ravenswood Academy. Other side, we've got a long sword again. So we didn't have we didn't have a portrait with a long sword. So I wanted to throw a bow into all of our long sword enthusiasts. Thanks very much if you support the project. On top, we've got our stamp, but we also have, if you peel that away, we've got On Guard. So, I thought that was kind of cool. As you go to open up the playing cards, you've got kind of this uh, warning, like, hey, be on your guard, cheaters, gamblers. You're sort of interesting, entering that world. And uh, kind of a throwback to the, uh, or reference rather, to the fencing term On Guard. So, the story behind that. Uh, stamp, wanted to do something kind of vintage, kind of old school looking. Ravenswood Playing Card Academy. Ravenswood Academy Playing Cards. Very nice. Okay, the back. You've got this beautiful ornate frame, and this is all embossed, so you can feel... You can feel the letters, you can feel... Um, you can feel the patterns on this, which is just kind of a fun sensation. These, uh, the background behind these words are recessed and the words sort of pop out. Just sort of fun to handle, like, the product should feel good in your hands, you know what I mean? Uh, so you've got this ornate frame, this really subtle blue shading as kind of a hint that the cards are going to be blue. You've got the uh, card spades hearts, diamonds, and clubs, the suits in the corners, which I thought was nice. This dent here echoes, if you peel away the stamp so you can see the writing, you've got a dent here for the pulling out the card, so this dent in the frame echoes that. They're both kind of symmetrical that way. Uh, our quote, don't tell me women are not the stuff of heroes. Chiu Jian, she was, wow, how do I introduce her? Um, this sort of uh, revolutionary who wore men's clothes, went out and about in public by herself, um, practiced martial arts, and remember this was a time a hundred years ago where women couldn't go out in public by themselves, they had their f feet bound and were like basically crippled for life, uh, some really dark times, so... She was. She started her own publication and uh, was really outspoken for women's rights and uh, kind of a interesting figure there that a lot of people have not heard about. So really, you should look her up if you have not investigated her already. Um, I just wanted to kind of bring that figure to more public awareness, I guess, more people's awareness. All right, well, let's go ahead and crack these open. Still new to the whole uh, doing stuff on camera, despite all these years of making videos, so forgive me if I'm kind of trying to pick and choose what thought to have. So what's cool about this is 
part of the proceeds went to a local women's shelter. So thanks so much if you supported this uh, very good thing. You know, imagine being like trapped in some sort of horrible abusive situation. You're trying to get out with your kid, but these women's shelters will like take people in. They'll give them counseling. They'll give them necessities like food, clothing, and they'll even help them relocate, like relocate to a different city or to a different job. Uh, so they can like start a new life. So that's something nice, I think. Okay, you've got this dedication card. Um, so this is the only American swordswoman in the entire deck. And uh, let me know in the comments below if you know who this is. If you can comment and recognize who this is, um, I will be very thoroughly impressed. But this is someone who would get up on the stages and just sort of take on all comers and fencing and she would beat them like men or women um but yeah the only american so i had to throw her in there and we had to get some representation in for the good us of a because there just aren't that many american swords women for certain reasons okay so you've got our sort of roll card here so king queen jack and these are all the names of the portraits that are going to be in the cards, so you can reference. Gladiatrix is not a historically accurate term, but again, if you Google that, you'll be able to find some more information. So anyway, that's the roll call. Add card, learn more, theravenswoodacademy.com. And man, oh man, I just love this illustration. Lady of the Lake holding out the sword for King Arthur. And this is an ink drawing by Howard Pyle. Um, oh my gosh. So I used to go to the library as a kid and read these huge thick volumes that Howard Pyle wrote on King Arthur in kind of this, he wrote in, it was like the 1800s that he published them and it was, he kind of wrote in this like pseudo archaic English style. Um, you know, surely, surely thou dost jest, quoth she. Um, but the ink drawing, so he drew, he he wrote the stories, but he illustrated all of these beautiful drawings with ink. Uh, I think of just ink and pen. And uh, you've got knights, you've got sorcerers, you've got uh, giants and battles and jousting and just, it was such an amazing series of books to explore as a kid. I just fell in love with it. Probably one of the reasons why I'm interested in history and the past. There was just such a vivid and interesting picture of the times past that he was able to create in a really, really unique style, I think. So there you go. That's from Howard Pyle. Um, and if anyone's listening, maybe we should do a Howard Pyle kind of base deck. Just beautiful, beautiful drawings. They really deserve some more recognition, but... They're not as recognizable to the public as, you know, Van Gogh or Da Vinci or whatever, so. Okay, the back design. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I kind of came up with this design. I just sort of sketched it on a napkin. Woman's head flanked by swords um, with a flower, you know, some sort of like peony in the middle or chrysanthemum. And uh, one sword is going to be Western, like rapier. The other is going to be Eastern, Jan, Chinese. And uh, the way it looks in motion, and I'll, I'll put a little bit of a... You've already seen it with the trailer, but the way this looks in motion with the turning and the way it rotates. So there's a symmetry with the spokes and this wheel, this kind of flower turning in the middle. It just looks really, really, really nice. Um... And such a beautiful blue, kind of like that old um, China looking uh, color. And the detail's incredible. Like if you look at um, the lady's hair, the hilts, you can see like the dragons on the sword. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Excuse me. <clears throat> pretty impressive. Getting all choked up just talking about it. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go ahead and look at the cards. So have to give a shout out to my friend Jenny Myers here who did the uh, pips. I showed her some kind of reference like old Renaissance style pips and wanted her to create something sort of like really vintage and classic and beautiful. It looked like it had been painted and she just nailed it. 
the uh, the shading. I don't know how well you can see that, but the shading on the the hearts, the diamonds, the shape of the clubs, very very nice. And then for this font, I wanted something that looked like classical and strong, so very nice. So here are all the hearts. See, that just looks so nice. Very big, very bold. I mean, and they look like they've been watercolored by someone, like hand painted, and they were. So, ha. Huh. Yeah, get on Instagram, check out uh, Jennifer Myers art. I'm not exactly sure what the account is, uh, but I'll put a link in the description. So nice. Okay, time for the portraits. All these historic portraits, very cool. So this is Esme Berenger, actress in the 1800s, performed on stage, performed with plays, Shakespeare type stuff, Romeo and Juliet, etc. And uh, she often did fencing rules. And her fencing instructor was Alfred Hutton. And Alfred Hutton was a war veteran. He was a fencing instructor. Alfred Hutton was the guy who showed up to his station where he was stationed as a young man and he beat the fencing instructor there and uh, <laughs> started teaching everyone. He's like, okay, we're now we're gonna really learn how to fence and started teaching them fencing, wrote some books. So Alfred Hutton, you ask him, well, who was your best fencing student? You expect him to say, oh yeah, some guy in the trenches, but no. Uh, Alfred Hutton said, guess what? My best fencing student ever, Psh! Esme Berenger. He just could, he just gushed about her. He just said she was so intelligent, uh, so dexterous. Um, and this portrait is based on an actual historical photo of her. And um, just such a cool pose. One of the coolest pictures you'll ever see, probably. And the detail is there. You know, if you get close on all of this stuff, it might have trouble focusing, but it's there if you're there in real life. Like the detail on her belt buckle, you know, kind of a little embellishment, but uh, definitely historically accurate as far as the portrait goes. Such a triumphant kind of pose there. And uh, she actually lived long enough to do um, movies in the... <laughs> So she lived, she acted as a young lady in like the stage Victorian era. And then she lived long enough to do really early films as an old lady. Um, and I actually haven't got a chance to go back and see some of those films. Um, I assume they're like from the forties or fifties, maybe, you know, she was getting up there, but I'd really like to go back and see those. So if you've seen any of those, let me know in the comments below. Cause I'm actually genuinely interested in how those, uh, how she does in those, what kind of actor she was. Okay, next. Oh, this is just so cool. We have Ilona Alec. Um, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that first name right. I don't know if it's, you know, Iona or Ilona because of the L's. I'm not sure. But uh, Miss Alec was forbidden from participating in fencing as a child because she was Jewish. And in the Olympics of the 1930s, she would go on to win gold in Berlin, right in front of Adolf Hitler, and of course not throw him the Nazi salute um, on the podium when she was uh, being presented her medal. So what a cool story. And then the next two Olympics were canceled because of the World War, when the, um, after you know, years and years and years, over a decade, when the Olympics resumed, she came back and won gold again in the fencing, um, women's fencing, and she did it in her 40s. So, and this portrait is based off a real picture of her. Such a cool story. Um, and there was a really beautiful portrait of her when she was younger, but we already had so many of these portraits where these ladies were young, and it's like, man, we need... Um, kind of a portrait where, you know, someone's older, someone's wiser, um, just kind of like compare and contrast type thing. And it's just, this picture is just probably one of my, as far as the historic photographs that we pulled from, one of my favorites, just so powerful, so interesting, so intriguing. Uh, so yeah, that was her Olympic champion fencer. Really, really interesting tale.
Take that, Hitler. Okay. Oh my goodness, <laughs> okay. So, um, there's a lot going on here. The hair, the ornate dress, the fan. But uh, that really was how this lady, Julie D'Aubigny, was dressed in some of her kind of woodblock print portraits. Or they, they might not have been woodblock by that time. They were probably, you know, etched in metal. But anyway, um, crazy story. All sorts of crazy stories attached to this lady. So, um, defeated a guy in a duel. <laughs> Went to go check on him as he was recovering because, you know, she'd run him through and then she fell in love with him. Um, went to a ball, was flirting with the girls. The men were like, hey, that's our territory. And she uh, beat several of them in duels there. She was just, by all accounts, a actual, legit, really good fencer and an opera diva. So she could sing and she had apparently a really interesting and unique voice. Um, so she just kind of did it all. Uh, ran off with her lover, <laughs> burned down a coven tree to uh, rescue a female lover of hers, sort of infiltration, disguise type stuff. Um, I could go on and on. We had a kind of a fundraiser to uh, ask for commission to do a book, sort of a biography on all of these lives. And unfortunately we didn't make it, so might never see the light of the day, but anyone can sort of Google the names on the card here you know, and find out more about these people. Uh, some stuff you're not going to find online. You got to go deep, you know, look up some books. But still, you can you can find some precursory stuff. And um, I recommended putting a fan there as kind of a contrast to the sword she was holding. I just thought it was such a cool idea. And those those style fans were actually big during the 1700s. You know, those Eastern fans that were brought over to Europe. So pretty cool pretty cool portrait and again detail so you can get you can get really close and see the design on the fan the design on her necklace let's see man yeah i don't know how good you can see that with the focus and everything but it is there the detail is all there okay moving on we've got some clubs i love this spindly shape of the clubs they're not fat they're kind of like spidery and uh, they just look so old school cool, like Renaissance, straight out of something the the Tudors would have. Mmm, so cool, so nice. And yeah, I mean we're we're kind of seeing all this white now, but you know, if you once you put the cards in motion, you've got this this interplay of all the white and blue, and I think it works really well. I love the symmetry there of the eights. Ah, oh, so nice. Okay, here we go. Gladiatrix. Gladiatrix is, again, a modern term um, for a female gladiator. But female gladiators did exist, so all these women so far have been actual people from actual history. Um, <laughs> there's, like, this statue, of, this statue relief, you know, of two female gladiators fighting. And the reference to female gladi gladiators is very very scarce they are very scarce rather um so we only have a few examples and they did fight um you know without any shirts on just like the men as far as we can tell so uh didn't want to make these these portraits too scandalous um because that's not what this project is about and I'm, I'm sure our european supporters don't even care notice but that is historically accurate that's what was going on um Man, there's so much I could say about like all the, the different armor, the different uh, sword styles that they used, but regardless, uh, there's our female gladiator fighting in the arena. Oh my goodness, okay. Well, Pergus, very mysterious figure in one of the oldest, I think the oldest fencing manuals that we have. Uh, this mysterious lady of old Pergus who is fighting in this guard where the shield and the sword are tucked close because it sort of looks timid it looks beguiling it's the woman's guard but then you strike and you uh the whoever illustrated the that anonymous fencing manual you know they have her demonstrating techniques and defeating these uh other priests and scholars who are throwing cuts at her so really beautiful figure and kind of 
kind of reminds you that these, you know, you see these old medieval paintings on these manuscripts and it's it looks so stylized, but these were real people. I mean, this could have been literally uh, maybe a figurative person, but also too, maybe someone who posed for the painter. And, um, you know, they were looking up at the subject and then looking down and sort of sketching a, a uh, in accordance to that reference. So very cool sword and buckler portrait there for all of our HEMA enthusiasts, historical European martial arts. Very nice. Okay, Joan of Arc. Wow, uh, so much to say. The only swordswoman who is not depicted with a sword. She did have a sword. Very interesting description of that sword survives in history, but she was so, um, she must have been so charismatic, so persuasive. Um, I just had to emphasize that sometimes it's not about the sword, it's about the woman um, or the person behind those resources. And um, this is one that just has grown on me and grown on me and grown on me. The haircut is just something so unglamorous, so not stylish, but it's probably very historically accurate, this kind of short bull page haircut. And um, the face is so like sort of pious, so sort of somber, like there's something more going on. Uh, what was it that made this, uh, <laughs> made a monarch trust a nobody 16 year old peasant girl when she showed up? Um, such an intriguing, fascinating story when someone's condemned by the Catholic Church, but then later <laughs> venerated by the Catholic Church. Um, this is probably a figure that will be studied for even more centuries to come. Just very enigma enigmatic. Um, so it was fun to kind of show this, because uh, so far I think there's been sparse armor in the portraits, like the gladiatrix or no armor, so I kind of wanted an excuse. We had to use Joan of Arc, but also too, it's like I wanted an excuse to put in that European armor. So really, really interesting. Uh, the armor is kind of just one or two centuries, maybe like one and a half centuries ahead of where Joan was historically. But, you know, these portraits are half history, half art. They're kind of a, a fun blend of the two, because why not? All right, we are finally to the eastern side. So far, everything has been old Europe or new Europe, but now we're getting to the diamonds are all China. So let's talk about China. Okay, <laughs> this is, so if you look, this is where you can look and, you know, see, okay, king of diamonds, so this is Hong Zhuangzhou. This is one of the most bizarre stories ever. Her brother, uh, Xuan Zhao's brother, claimed to be the brother of Christ, and he led a revolution in China, and this was the bloodiest, the bloodiest war of the 19th century. You just probably haven't heard about it because it was sort of contained in China, part of China's own history, and <laughs> I cannot remember the exact death count, but we're talking tens and tens and tens of millions of people uh, died, so... So sad that all those people had to die. Kind of an unfortunate chapter in human history. But anyway, a very crazy story behind the whole, you know, her brother or her husband claimed to be the brother of Christ um, and led a revolution. You should definitely check that out. Um, just Google Hong Zhuan Zhao and you'll find her brother there. Um, I keep saying brother. I can't remember. You know, there's sometimes there's debate whether it was like kind of her brother or husband or kind of the... Um, kind of like a title given to a concubine type thing. Um, it's been so long, we were kind of playing this, <laughs> I think, literally a year or two ago. So uh, forgive me if I don't remember the exact nature of that title. It's kind of been jumbled, jumbled up. But she did uh, have jade ornaments on her belt. Historical records, she uh, used two swords at a time. She was apparently a very accomplished martial artist. And this pose, this posture comes from the martial arts that we practice at Ravenswood Academy, where you have the two sabers, uh, Chinese style. Uh, and it is possible to fight that way uh, in a very elegant fashion and efficient fashion, I might add. Very interesting. Okay. 
Hua or Fa Mulan, the only mythical figure in our swordswoman portraits. Um, all the other portraits have been thus far historical, actual people who existed. Mulan is just a tale for entertainment, but I basically had to put her in because um, A, she's popular right now in the, uh, I guess, popular conscience, the general conscience. And also too, uh, there were so many swordswomen in China, so many accounts of actual historical swordswomen and it kind of just chose, it made sense to choose one who represented their kind of profile, I guess you could say. So very stylized, you know, did she ever wear flowers? Would she have worn flowers in her hair? Uh, maybe not, maybe only on special occasions, but her, her names literally mean flowers. They literally reference flowers in that Chinese language. So you kind of, you kind of can't ignore that. You got to paint some, some, uh, some imagery that attests that. And again, that detail, like if you look at that, uh, it's kind of hard to focus, but if you look at that, uh, jade ornament right there, uh, focus. Yeah. I can't really, I can't really show you the light, but like even the pommel, there's like a dragon etched into her pommel that you can see even more detail of in real life. Really pretty. Um, so yeah, the detail on these is incredible. All right. Um, a World War II era fighter, freedom fighter for China. Everyone... So the Chinese were using swords during World War II. My teachers, 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 teacher taught troops during World War II, just before World War II, on how to use these da dao um, in close quarter combat. And this is where everyone says, now wait a minute, why were they using swords in World War II? Ha 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 ha. Well, there's all, I could talk about that for an hour, but I will say right off the bat, Everyone was issuing blades in World War II. The Britons had trench knives. The Americans had knives. Um, so it's not so much that uh, it, everyone was issuing blades. It was just a matter of how long. Um, and there are other issues, factors into that. But anyways, too, they would... Uh, you know, do these covert runs. Apparently there's some multiple Chinese sources that attest to how they would sneak up in enemy camps, run through, cut people down, then try and get out of there before the enemy could mount a counterattack. Uh, there's a wonderful article on these women. This was an all women's unit. And, uh, you know, they shot guns, they threw grenades. They were very brave, apparently very well disciplined, but they also used these. They'd, they'd strap these to, the, to their backs and then close quarters, they would pull those out. Um, and I actually have a video uh, on our channel of me performing this Da Dao set that was taught, um, you know, almost a hundred years ago now to these, um, to some of these soldiers. So really interesting stuff historically. Okay, off to the diamonds, some beautiful marbling there. You can see the depth, like someone uh, just hand painted that. And they did. There we go, there's some focus. And you can see the swirl of color there. Very nice. Dun, dun, dun. Wow based off of a real set of armor Tomoe goes in one of the many many female samurai attested to in Japan's history um, in fact there was a few archaeological digs there was a study a journal article that basically said hey uh, that came out maybe like in the last 10 years I can't remember but it said basically hey more women in Japan fought than we thought <laughs> Wait, more women in Japan. Yeah, more women in Japan fought than we thought. Yeah. Um, so, oh my gosh. 
if you, I don't know how well it focus, but you can just see the cherry blossoms on her armor. And that's a real suit of armor. You can see the green eyes on her dragon if that focuses. The detail is even more impressive in person. Uh, it's just so well done. And uh, this pose is based off an actual historic photo where a samurai had his sword, big sword slung on his back. Um, <laughs> just so beautiful, so ornate. And um, so impressive. One of my favorites, definitely. It's hard to pick a favorite, but one of my favorites. And you get to see, so we saw Joan of Arc's armor on the eastern, or sorry, on the western side. So now you kind of get to see the armor on the uh, eastern side. Very cool set of armor there. Hmm, so nice. Wow. Okay, I am you know, sort of saying this with every card, but man, another one of my favorites. So this is uh, uh, Renee of Jancy. Uh, just Google uh, Lakshmi Bai. Right? Here she is. Queen in India. These Indian queens are just, these tales are unbelievable. They're, you know, there's a record of an Indian queen riding into battle, like on a war elephant takes an arrow to the eye, breaks off the arrow, and then just keeps going, like keeps charging forward. Um, you know, it's uh, it's kind of somber, it's kind of sad, all these battles, all these lives cut short. Very, very, uh, very, uh, I don't even know what to say. It's, it definitely prompts a lot of thoughts and, uh, but you know, we don't wanna, it's not that we wanna turn it into mindless entertainment. Uh, we do wanna kinda be aware of those realities, but also we kinda don't wanna forget those stories. You know, we, seeing stuff like this makes me feel like, wow, I have it so good in this uh, first world cushioned uh, area that I live in. I don't have to suit up and go to battle and geez, fight people. But anyway, so this is a queen who uh, refused to give up her territory in the 19th century. She, forget, she refused to give up her territory to the Brits who were coming in. And um, she sort of rebelled against them and led her forces in battle to oppose them. And this is based off a historical portrait of her as well, this posture. The gauntlet, the uh, sword, the uh, shield, and again, crazy, crazy level of detail. The jewelry, the earrings, the eyes. Um, I'm not sure how close I can put this and get away with it, but just unbelievably rich, beautiful detail. I wanted every one of these court cards to be sort of a work of art, and they are. <laughs> oh, okay. Dahomey Amazon. Um, so this was another all women's unit that was um, fighting in Africa. Again, fighting some, uh, I guess, colonization efforts by the French, I believe it was. And uh, even though they were outnumbered and uh, their technology wasn't as uh, efficient as the enemy side, they still... Um, enemy accounts talk about how brave they were, how fierce, how unbelievably fierce. They had rifles, so they would shoot with those. They also had spears, but they did also have these kind of machetes that uh, did not have acute points. They were just mainly for uh, slashing. And uh, some crazy, crazy stories of these ladies, as you can imagine, uh, charging into battle, doing... Uh, you know, beheading people, doing all sorts of stuff. I'll kind of try and keep it PG here, but yeah, you can look up that, um, their exploits and uh, their kind of culture. And um, yet again, really interesting to see the difference, you know, so this is armor that works for traveling long distances on foot, um, whereas someone suiting up in a European armor might have a different agenda, a different environment, a different, um, setting a different enemy they're fighting. But, you know, it's cool to see the contrast. This is, I mean, it's history, but it's also, like, fashion. But it's also personal stories. It's also combat. It's also art. 
That's one of the reasons why I love history and cards, and there's just so much intersectionality. Um, so many different different uh, things that sort of stimulate the mind, I guess. Spades look really, really cool. So kind of like fat. <laughs> Very nice. And here's our Ace of Spades. Italian rapier, Spanish rapier, and kind of a great sword in the middle. Swordwoman playing card, limited edition, one of 1,000, which they were, which they are. So, um, huge, huge rarity, I guess you could say. Um, very, very limited. So these are not gonna be reprinted. I mean, you know, we sold about um, about 900 on our starter and the other 100 are gonna be shipped to the Academy, kind of just gifts for students or um, promo type things that we give to people we care about or, you know, who are interested in taking classes. But that's it after that. Okay, and the Jokers, the Diptych Jokers, you've got these kind of, this pattern that fits together right here like that. Very cool, RA, Ravenswood Academy. And the colors are, it's kind of dark in here in my room. Uh, remember, I live in my parents' basement, you know. I, uh, I mean, I've never, I've never even been outside before. But um, you can see these blue vivid colors. These are woodblock prints from, uh, I believe, late 1800s or early 1900s. I have to go back and check again, but over 100 years old. Um, these women practicing kendo, practicing, or, you know, not technically kendo, but basically practicing with each other some sword techniques. And uh, the mirror image you get when you lay them beside each other is just so cool. All right, so handling, they handle really, really well, as you saw in the trailer. Um, I won't get too much into card flourishing, but they work just fine for that. They kind of glide off of each other, but then they don't slip out of your hands. Um, I was talking about the different stocks, the different types of paper and finish, and our supplier said, I have one more for you to try, and I was kind of like, well, I've tried all of them, you know, I, I think I... Um, I think I got a good idea of what my options are, but he said, no, 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 let me send you one more. And it was just, once I got it, it was just so smooth to play with, so thin yet so strong. They got like a really good snap to them. Um, so I, would, I told him, I was like, yep, I love it. Go ahead and use that one. So I'm glad he sent me that. All right. Well, that's Swords of Playing Cards. I have to say thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of our supporters. Um, it's such a niche and unique and uh, interesting, I guess, idea, but it's definitely an important one. I'm really thankful to all the people who backed this and made this possible. And uh, hopefully that means we can just keep on uh, making beautiful things and helping people. So uh, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Really, really cool just piece of history. And I feel like you can... This makes such a cool gift. It's a cool experience to be using it yourself, but it makes a cool gift because people can look at this and enjoy the beautiful art or play solitaire or just start Googling, start researching all these historical, these amazing historical figures and start learning. So it's just kind of just, you get so much for, you know, $12. Um, I'm glad we were able to make it, make it come to life. So thanks so much and we'll see you next time.